Have you ever stood somewhere high up and out of nowhere, a strange thought popped into your mind? Sudden, intense, like an impulse you can't control. Why do we feel the urge to jump? It makes no sense. You don't want to get hurt. You have no intention of jumping. But for a brief moment, your mind shows you that possibility and it shakes you. Is it a glitch in the brain? A psychological flaw? Or is there something much deeper behind this phenomenon? The truth might surprise you. Get ready, because what you're about to discover could change the way you understand your own mind. Imagine standing at the edge of a skyscraper or on the rim of a towering cliff. The wind brushes against your skin, the horizon stretches endlessly before you, and suddenly a strange thought flashes through your mind. What if I jumped? You don't want to get hurt. You're not thinking about ending your life. But this sensation appears out of nowhere, intense and fleeting. This phenomenon, known as l'appel du vide, or the call of the void, is something many people experience, yet few ever talk about it. What does it really mean? Is it some hidden urge for self-destruction, or just a trick of the mind? Studies suggest that this sensation isn't necessarily linked to suicidal tendencies, but rather a misinterpretation of our own survival instincts. When the brain detects a risky situation, it activates defense mechanisms to keep us safe. However, instead of simply stepping back, we sometimes misread this reaction as an impulse to jump. That sudden thought can be unsettling, but it doesn't mean you actually want to harm yourself. In reality, it could just be a natural response to the heightened awareness of your own vulnerability in that moment. The call of the void isn't limited to those with anxiety or depression. It can happen to anyone, even people who have never had self-destructive thoughts. Some philosophers and psychologists believe this experience reveals something much deeper about human existence, a rare moment where we become fully aware of our own fragility. But if it's not a real desire to jump, then why do we feel this urge at all? Our bodies are equipped with automatic defense mechanisms that kick in before we even have time to rationalize a dangerous situation. When standing at the edge of a cliff, your brain goes into high alert, triggering physical and emotional responses to keep you safe. Your heart races, your muscles tense up, and your senses sharpen. This reaction is completely normal. It's part of our survival instinct. But here's the catch. This same biological response can sometimes be misinterpreted by our own consciousness. The fear of falling blends with automatic thoughts, creating the illusion that we actually want to jump. But that's not the case. Your brain is just doing its job and trying to protect you. A study led by psychologist Jennifer Hames at Florida State University revealed something surprising. The call of the void is not directly linked to suicidal thoughts, but rather an instinctive reflex of the brain. In her research, Hames interviewed hundreds of people and found that both those with a history of anxiety and those without any emotional issues reported experiencing this momentary impulse. What does this mean? That this experience is not a sign that something is wrong with your mind. It's simply a misinterpretation of your body's natural warning signals. The brain perceives danger and sends commands to step back. But our conscious mind can misinterpret this reaction as a real urge to jump. This kind of cognitive distortion happens because our minds try to make sense of emotions in a logical way, even when they're irrational. That quick impulse to pull away from the edge can be misread as an actual urge to leap. But in reality, it's just the brain reinforcing the importance of the danger. This phenomenon doesn't only happen at extreme heights. It can also occur in other risky situations, like when you're driving at high speed and suddenly wonder what would happen if you jerked the steering wheel. The call of the void is simply a reflection of our biology, not a real intention of self-destruction. The human mind generates thousands of thoughts every day, but not all of them are welcome. Some ideas appear out of nowhere, with no apparent reason catching us off guard. These unexpected thoughts are known as intrusive thoughts and the call of the void is one of the most intriguing examples of this phenomenon. These thoughts don't necessarily reflect our true desires. They're simply a natural byproduct of how the brain functions. In many cases, the more we try to push them away, the more persistent they become. 
It's almost as if the mind is playing tricks on us, creating unsettling scenarios just to test our reaction. Psychology explains that these thoughts are linked to threat detection mechanisms. Our brain is wired to anticipate danger, and one way it does that is by simulating worst-case scenarios. When standing near a high ledge, for example, your mind might suddenly create a vivid image of what would happen if you took a wrong step. This involuntary visualization doesn't mean you actually want to jump. It's simply your brain reinforcing awareness of the danger. However, this mental simulation can be so intense that it makes you question whether the thought came from a real desire, leading to feelings of discomfort or even guilt. Researchers suggest that people with higher levels of anxiety are more prone to experiencing intrusive thoughts. Anxiety heightens the brain's perception of risk, making it constantly search for potential threats, even when there isn't any real danger. In this context, the call of the void could be nothing more than an exaggerated fear of the unknown. But here's an important point. Intrusive thoughts have no power over our actions. Just because your mind presents an extreme scenario doesn't mean you'll act on it. The key is understanding that these thoughts are completely normal and don't indicate anything wrong with your psyche. The phenomenon of the call of the void isn't just fascinating to psychology and neuroscience, it has also captivated philosophy. Jean-Paul Sartre, one of the greatest existentialist thinkers, described this sensation as the vertigo of possibility. A moment when a person becomes fully aware that they have the absolute freedom to choose any action, even something extreme. In his work, Being and Nothingness, Sartre argued that this absolute freedom can create intense anguish because it forces us to confront the reality that we alone are responsible for our choices. Standing at the edge of an abyss isn't just about facing physical danger. It's about realizing that, in the end, our destiny is entirely in our hands. This idea was influenced by Soren Kierkegaard, one of the earliest existentialist philosophers, who referred to this experience as the vertigo of freedom. According to Kierkegaard, true anxiety arises when we recognize that nothing is physically stopping us from making extreme decisions. When standing on the edge of a cliff, the fear isn't just about the height or the possibility of falling. It's about the realization that we could jump if we wanted to. This awareness creates a deep discomfort, making us question whether we really have control over our actions. Kierkegaard believed that this existential anxiety was an unavoidable part of the human condition, something that everyone experiences at some point in life. From this philosophical perspective, the call of the void wouldn't just be a glitch in the brain or a biological survival mechanism, but rather a reflection of human freedom in its purest form. It forces us to confront the weight of our choices and the responsibility we have over our own existence. But this vertigo of freedom also has an upside. It reminds us that despite fear and uncertainty, we are the architects of our own lives and we have the power to decide our own path. If the call of the void isn't a real desire to jump, then what does this experience reveal about our minds? For many researchers, this phenomenon may offer a deeper insight into how we deal with our own thoughts and impulses. It forces us to confront the reality that we don't always have full control over what crosses our minds. That can be unsettling, but it also serves as an important reminder. Thinking something doesn't mean wanting it. Just because a thought appears doesn't mean it defines who we are or that we have to act on it. Beyond that, this phenomenon can be seen as evidence of the complexity of the human mind. Our brains are constantly processing information, analyzing risks, and running simulations to protect us. The call of the void might simply be an extreme manifestation of that process. It appears in moments of tension because our minds are wired to explore all possible outcomes, even the ones we would never actually follow through on. This shows that the mind is an incredibly powerful tool, but that we don't have to give meaning to everything it presents to us. Finally, this experience invites us to reflect on the relationship between fear and freedom. If, as Sartre and Kierkegaard suggested, this sudden impulse stems from the awareness of our own freedom, then maybe the discomfort we feel isn't something to be feared, but rather an invitation to consciousness. 
The call of the void reminds us that we are alive, that we have choices, and that even in the face of uncertainty, we are the ones who decide our own path. Instead of fearing this phenomenon, we can see it as a reminder that we have control over our decisions and that our minds are far more intricate than we often realize. The call of the void is one of those mysteries of the human mind that make us question who we really are. It reminds us that while we don't always have full control over our thoughts, that doesn't mean they have control over us. Instead of fearing this sensation or misinterpreting it, we can see it for what it truly is, a reflection of the complexity of our consciousness. It's a phenomenon that blends instinct, neuroscience, and philosophy. In the end, this fleeting impulse isn't an invitation to danger, but rather proof of our brain's ability to anticipate scenarios and assess risks, even if at times we misinterpret it. If there's one valuable lesson we can take from this experience, it's the understanding that thoughts do not define us. Our minds are capable of generating extreme scenarios without them representing our true desires. We may feel fear, uncertainty, or even anxiety when confronted with the weight of free will, but in the end, we are the ones who decide how to act. This phenomenon might be unsettling for those who experience it, but understanding its origins can offer a new perspective on how our minds work. Maybe instead of seeing it as something threatening, we can use it as an opportunity to reflect on how we perceive our own impulses and emotions. If this video resonated with you, hit the like button so it can reach more people who've had this experience and need this explanation. Subscribe to the channel to continue exploring the mysteries of the human mind and gaining deeper insights into the psychological phenomena that shape our perception. And of course, share in the comments if you've ever felt something similar. Your experience might help others realize they're not alone.